Morgado goes clear. 18 years of age comes from Caldas del Reina in Portugal. Little bit of an advantage. The Portuguese fans are here on the side of the road cheering on this young rider as he goes clear. He's got one lap of racing to go. This time they get the bell. And at the moment there is a group of eight riders in with a chance of winning this world title. Morgada goes through, chased by seven other competitors behind him. And there is a little bit of a standoff. Seven, seven chasing riders are just not that committed to working together at the moment. And with every pedal stroke, Morgado of Portugal, he takes more and more time with just one lap to complete. The average speed, 42 and a half kilometers an hour. This is the group behind, containing the two American powerhouses. Also the British rider, Zach Walker, Novach also in there. And so is Frank Regillo of Estonia. The solo leader, growing his advantage. This is the next chasing group, led by Benjamin Eckerstorfer. Also in there is uh, Romain Pajur, who was the first big attacker of the day. Can he grow his lead? Well, he's got quite a handy little lead at this point. It's going to take a bit of effort from this uh, chasing group because they're still hesitating. They're still looking at each other. Who's going to do the work? Is Morgado going to ride away for the World Championship here in the Junior Men's Road Race? Well, there'll be no more hesitation from this man. He's going to give every single thing he's got for the final 16 kilometers of this 135.6 kilometer Junior Men's Road Race here in Wollongong. This rider has fully committed now to trying to win this world title. He has gone alone to try and secure the rainbow bands for Portugal. What a big moment that would be if he could pull this off. Superb racing. We've seen him so animated, so involved in the action during today's race. And now he's got the gap he's been looking for for the entire race. Every now and then we've seen him attack. France still with more riders than anyone else in the chasing group. Can they do something about this? I think they're going to wait until the climbs. Certainly the riders from France, you now see some sacrificing. It is number nine, Paul Manier of France, who's sacrificing for his teammate. Just trying to keep this gap intact. It's 18 seconds for Morgado of Portugal. 28 nations have won medals in this Junior World Championship. And one of the nations who's never taken a medal is Portugal. Can Morgado create a little bit of history for his nation? Well, he's just out of sight, which gives him a huge advantage. It's only 18 seconds, but when you're out of sight, allows you to get more of an advantage because the chasing group's not motivated by seeing that rider out in front. He is one of the riders that we've noticed all day today. He's looked very comfortable and powerful. And you can just see the lull in the speed with one rider from France having to do all the work because they have two riders in this group. It's so Paul Manier who is sacrificing everything for Thibaut Gruel. Gruel is the rider wearing number 10. Behind him, sitting in the wheel, is number 33, Menno Hoising. But still, this rider maintains his lead. 17 seconds. We know he's a good climber, though, Rochelle. He's been one of the main climbers in this race so far. Yeah, he's been able to cover every move uh, when there's been attacks from the riders from France. He's been able to cover everything on the climbs. It seems to be one of his strengths. Still got food in his back pocket. He may offload that before the finish. Two really? bottles on his bike. Still two bottles. He's just focused on uh, his, his leg speed and rhythm at the moment. No doubt battling against the world of pain. But uh, one rider from France having to do all the work and we're going to see some fireworks once they get onto the climb from this chasing group. 14 seconds. For me, the rider who is of most danger to this leader 
is the Norwegian Jorgen Nordhagen. We know that he has been climbing superbly. Let's see whether he launches himself up Mount Pleasant to try and take the victory for Norway today. Norway have secured wins in the Junior World Championship before. It's been a great week for the Norwegians with two gold medals already won here at the World Championships. The morale in the team is high. Well, the defending champions are Norway. They took that solo victory last time with Perstrand Hagenas. You remember, he attacked just before the finish last year. He beat Roman Gregoire, who will ride in the under-23 race later of France, and Madis Mikels of Estonia. Oh, well, look at this performance by Zach Walker as he rides himself back to the front group of riders. Well, I never would have expected that, Anthony. He's been the only rider of those drop riders being able to come across to this group and now puts himself in medal contention. What a ride from Zach Walker. That is a tremendous move by the Isle of Man rider. He just cruised himself across. Thought, right, if I'm gonna get a medal in these World Championships, then I need to get myself to the group. And that's what he's done. Well, he'll be sitting on the back now, taking some huge deep breaths, just trying to recover before the explosive attacks that are going to, going to come on this climb. The problem for these riders uh, is that they need to keep an eye on that blackboard, don't they? Because they have no race radios. A rider like Zach Walker who's come across doesn't realise perhaps there's a rider up the road. And, and another group of riders now coming across. U USA have dominated this race for the first half and it now looks like they're going to put themselves back in contention for the medals. It could have been a mistake for that uh, chasing group to just put all the pressure on France. Should have kept the pace a little bit higher because a 29 second gap for Magado now is starting to look a little bit dangerous. The rider out in front from Portugal, he has a 29 second lead. Only one rider working in the chasing group. Some few fresh legs in there about to attack once they hit those climbs. And Morgado is just emptying the tank. He's giving absolutely everything he's got around this final lap of the junior men's road race. This has been such an exciting race, Anthony. So many changes. This rider is emptying the tank. He wants to win this world title. He's a dangerous rider as far as the other competitors are concerned. Morgado solo, 43 on his back. A little bit of gel still left in the pockets. Two bottles on the bike, heading towards the conclusion of this race. And France with Paul Manier are desperately trying to hold this. The group behind, they say it's 39 seconds. It's not 39 seconds. They're about to make the junction. Novak is also in there. The American team bring back a little bit of firepower and they make their junction as well. So we have a bigger group of riders. Yeah, and Mugato is starting to tire now. It's only 20 seconds lead. And with the bigger group behind him, a lot more legs to do the work. I make it 12 riders now at the front of this race. Let's see how it unfolds. Is it going to be a solo victory? Well, you can see Morgado is having to dig really, really deep now. The pace hasn't really changed in the peloton, but Morgado just losing time, holding it at 20 seconds. So one solo leader of the Portuguese, Antonio Morgado, chased by Jorgen Nordhagen of Norway, Manier and Gruhl of France, Van Mechelen of Belgium, Herzog of Germany, Zach Walker of Great Britain, Menno Hoising of the Netherlands, Regilo of Estonia, Jan Christian of Switzerland, Pavel Novac of the Czech Republic, two American riders, Artem Schmidt and Viggo Moore. As he looks around, he's starting to get a little bit more worried. The shoulders are rocking and rolling. He knows that he's got a massive moment now as he starts to make his way to the first bit of the climb at Mount Oosley. There's the distance, 25 seconds, he's told. And I hear that on Radio Tour as confirmation. 
25 seconds the lead as he makes his way onto the climb. This is the most critical moment in this race. Well, we are going to see some attacks, big attacks from that chasing group, and it will string out, and then it'll be every rider trying to get back in contact. They've still got to get over Mount Pleasant after Mount Oosley. What a job this rider from France is doing to try and bring forward the possibility of a French gold medal. There's the makeup, the composition of this group of riders behind. What do these riders have in the legs? See number 54 there, emptying his bottle, just leaving a little bit of water in his bottle, just in case he needs to take a sip before the finish, but just offloading a little bit of weight before he hits this climb. Antonio Morgado, solo leader, 9.6 kilometres of racing to go, ups the tempo just a little bit more on this climb. We know he's a great climber, but that's not good news for him because the Shimano neutral service car goes past, the flotilla of motorbikes go past. He knows what that means. That means that the group of riders behind are closing the gap. He certainly does look to be labouring at the moment. He's got pain on his face we can see he has been a good climber where are the attacks going to come from this time up the climb Jan Christian goes on the right hand side of the road Zach Walker matches him Nordhagen wants to go as well these little climbers are using their power to good effect Morgado is over the first bit now he can relax just a moment Rochelle what comes up next He's got a right and a left hand turn, and then very soon he'll be on to the next climb, which is significantly steeper and longer than that little pinch over Mount Oosley. He'll turn on to Mount Pleasant, and uh, that's where no doubt we'll see the climbers putting in everything they possibly can. They'll be wanting to drop the faster riders before the finish. Now's the moment where all the training, all the preparation pays off. If you want to win the world title, now you have to make your move. Now you have to be in the front group. Now you have to go deeper than you've gone before to try and stay with everyone else or to put everybody else firmly in the hurt. This is the moment of the world championships where it all gets decided. 8.7 kilometers to go. We're now on now to Mount Pleasant for the final time. We've had a great race. 23 seconds is now the advantage. Well, he's attacking this climb with everything he's got left. Legado of Portugal. He is in the lead. 23 seconds advantage. And back in that chasing group, we saw a great move from Emil Herzog of Germany. He went straight to the front and applied the pressure. He wants to go onto the climb at the front, so he's got a few positions to lose before he uses his strength and power on the flatter parts of the course. He doesn't seem to be losing momentum. The gap is still there, 25 seconds. Even Nordhagen, who's the best climber in this group, is not really getting there. For the first time, we see Thibaut Gruhl. He starts to make his move. Herzog is on the front. Nordhagen second wheel. Zach Walker is third wheel. Behind them is Thibaut Gruhl of France. This is the point in the race where everything gets stretched. Well, no big attacks coming because Emil Herzog of Germany has applied the pressure on the front just to keep a high pace, just to eliminate those really powerful surges of attacks. 22 seconds is now the advantage for this rider as he tries to get to the top of this climb. You kind of get the sense that if he gets to the top, this could be his world title. Two Americans, they're gone. Herzog, Nordhagen. He's still there. He's still got an advantage. It's still 21 seconds. Look at the face of the Portuguese rider. No Portuguese rider has ever taken a medal in the Junior World Championships. Is this about to be the moment? Still momentum, Rochelle. Looks absolutely superb. He has ridden this as though it is his finish line is at the top here. Yeah, well, this is his fav favourite part of the course. The climb, obviously, is a, a good climber. So we just see a few riders being dropped there. Will they make it back on the flat section, the flat run into Wollongong? It is Megado at the moment. He goes over the top with a 19-second advantage. 
and Herzog still the rider that's applying the pressure on this climb. Bronze medalist in the time trial and he's digging very, very deep. He wants to be in the mix for the medals. Morgado just tucking in now, just getting a little micro rest, giving the body the chance to just recover. Herzog over the top, flat out in second place for Germany. He wants to make sure that if he's applying pressure through the pedals that he doesn't have riders hard on the wheel, getting the benefit from that. A very, very strong ride from Herzog. He might be a rider that can get across by himself to the Portuguese and contend for the gold medal. This is the winning move perhaps for the German. It's looking good. How much has he got left in the tank? The last German winner was in 2014. Jonas Bocalau took the victory that day in Ponferrada in Spain. Morgado into that aero tuck. What has he got left in the legs? Has he got the legs to go all the way to the finish? Herzog is plunging down this descent like a stone. It looked like in the distance there was a rider in front of Herzog, but it may have been a motorbike. We'll take a little look, see who is here. Well, only 10 seconds advantage now for Morgado, who are the riders. It's Herzog, he's by himself. This is looking good for the German rider. He's going to put everything he's got. I don't think anyone can match him across the flat section to the finish. This is looking very good for the German. The chase for the bronze medal at the moment is Nordhagen of Norway, Gruel of France. Gruel of France has been there the entire time. Just waiting and waiting. Is that tactic going to pay off? Kicking his way over every single little rise. Full commitment by Morgado, who went on the attack with one lap of racing to go and is still there. 11 seconds is lead, 21 to the bronze medal positions. Look at this pain face of the Portuguese powerhouse. Morgado urging himself on. There's Herzog. The gap is significant. He can see the rider just in front of him. Every single little rise is pain. Every little descent gives you that little chance to recover. Well, Morgado is holding Herzog at 12 seconds on the descent, where you would think Herzog would be able to make up some time on Morgado. We have got a race on our hands here coming into the finish. The Portuguese rider. Morgado, he's 11 seconds in front of Emil Herzog of Germany. And then we have our two little climbers from France and Norway battling it out for the bronze medal at this moment. Third on the road. Five kilometres of racing to go in this Junior World Championship in Wollongong in New South Wales. This course has produced a thriller. 42 and a half kilometres an hour for junior racing around this 135.6 kilometres. They have gone full bore all day today. This is Nordhagen in the red, white and blue of Norway with the Thibaut Gruhl of France. Well, the gap is still there, nine seconds. He looks around for the first time. Don't look around too much because otherwise Herzog will get that little bit more of a feeling that he comes back to you. Nine seconds now and you can see Mugato, the shoulders are rocking, the knees have gone out. He wouldn't like to see the big man of Germany closing in behind him. Eight seconds now. Can Emil Herzog close down this gap with only 4.4 kilometres to go? Herzog this. is in full time trial mode now. Oh, that looked painful from Morgado as he came out of that little turn. Oh, look at the speed through that corner from Herzog. He closed it down to five seconds. Still the chase goes on behind, and these riders believe there's a bronze medal up for grabs because they're about to close in and they're about to catch Nordhagen and the French rider Thibaut Gruhl. So the plan of France looks like it hasn't quite paid off yet. There's the gap between the two riders at the front Morgado of Portugal. Four kilometers to go. Herzog into the aero tuck. He can't pedal any faster on that bike right now. Once he turns right, he'll uh, favor that part of the course the last three and a half kilometers into the finish because there is a little bit of wind on this road and he'll be able to use his power. You can see it's so close. It looks like he will catch Morgado across this section. 
Morgado looking behind. That's an indication that he's really, really hurting. And now this group of riders could come into play because if they start to mess around, these riders could be going for gold. Well, Emil Herzog has to just ride all the way to the finish with everything that he's got. Here's Magado trying to keep that lead. He's got seven seconds over Herzog. There's our two riders at the front of the race. Portugal looking for a historic victory. Herzog, look at that. He dives across to the left-hand side, trying to get in the slipstream, edging with every single pedal revolution closer and closer to the Portuguese rider who finally says okay I'll take I'll take the ride into the finish because Herzog he cannot sit up from this point he just has to ride all the way to the finish if they Herzog will come past and Magado will sit on the wheel and then we will have an ex very exciting finish because if they start to play around then they have a bunch just 38 seconds behind them and in sight and Herzog says get on the wheel and he will hope that Magada will work, but the attack comes now, and it comes from the British rider, Zach Walker, who wants to get them across and take the gold medal. He doesn't want the bronze. These riders all messing around a little bit now, though. That might not help them. They need to work, and they need to work all the way to the finish. Who's got the better sprint? Herzog, Magado? What's going to happen? 2.3 kilometers of racing to go. Well, I think these riders will certainly come to the finish together to battle it out for the gold medal. The riders behind looking at each other, no one really willing to lay it on the line, but even so, they know that even together, they probably can't match the power of Herzog across that section of the course. He's been on the front, hasn't he, every single lap across for the last the few laps, yeah. He loves this section. He loves just to, getting into that time trial rhythm. He's but seen if Magada will work. Can I win? Are you serious? <laughs> Did he actually ask him that? Yeah, he asked him that, and that's just simply because if Magado says, no, we race this right to the line, then Herzog knows that he just needs to sit behind now and have a little bit of a rest. Absolutely. Did he really ask Morgado, can I win? Well, if he rides all the way to the finish with Morgado on the wheel, well, Magado hasn't agreed, so Herzog's attacked him. Well, big attack now as Herzog goes clear. Magado's not giving up. He wants to win this gold medal. He said, no deal, mate. Let's race this out and see who the strongest man is to the finish line. Yeah, this Herzog is a, this is a world title. This is a world title. You do not give a world title away. And Herzog, to even think that was a possibility at this level, it's not going to happen. Morgado is going to beat him at the line as far as he's concerned. Herzog, well, I think he's been a little bit naive to think that that was a possibility when so much is at stake. Well, he would have been thinking, because I did that big turn across the flat, that's guaranteed Herzog a silver medal. They've got a minute advantage now, so the race is just between these two riders. And Magado just tightens his, <laughs> he gets ready for a sprint, tightens up his shoes. Magado gets set. He is ready to try and win this title for Portugal. It would be an historic one. He checks around. Herzog on the front, towing this rider all the way to the finish line. And Magado is not going to do another turn now. 800 metres of racing to go. What a race we've had. The powerhouse Herzog has done everything right. Maybe apart from the question that you asked on the run into the finish, Morgado is going to sit there and he's going to make the big German take him all the way to 200 metres to go. And we've seen Morgado attack on this section of the course. Germany lead. Morgado of Portugal in second place, who's played an absolute blinder. He waited and he waited for the German, then he sat on his wheel all the way in. And now it's about the drag race, and it's the Portuguese rider, Antonio Morgado, a head to head with Herzog. It's going to be close on the line. Who's going to take it? Oh, and the German does take it. Herzog gets it on the line. 
finally, he managed to get past Morgado. A fair sprint, but what a race that was. Well, aren't we glad that Morgado said, no, let's race it to the line, mate. That was a fair and square win. They raced it head to head. Here is the sprint for the bronze medal. Uh, the silver and gold have gone. On the front is Vigo Moore. Getting ready for the sprint is Artem Schmidt. Schmidt of the USA as he tries to go through to take the bronze on a day that America really have done everything they can to get a medal. It's Schmidt on the front making his move on the outside. Here comes the Belgian rider. It's a bronze medal for Vlad van Mechelen of Belgium. The Wollongong World Championships. Here's the replay for the sprint for bronze. And it is Belgium who takes the bronze medal. He rode a clever race today. He was always there or thereabouts. But look at this sprint between these two riders. Morgado had the front line here, but suddenly Herzog found something. As the road just kicked up, Herzog, who's had so much power today, just overhauled Morgado on that run into the finish. And don't forget these junior riders are on restricted gears, so it's all about that leg speed. They'll be in the biggest gear that they've got on the bike. And the throw to the line from Herzog. What a happy man today. Look at the crowds there too. They are rolling in for the few final days of this World Championship. So our beautiful coastline covered by some dark clouds today. And in the end, Herzog takes it by a bike length over Magado. It looked closer from the front, didn't it? Yeah, and it did look like at uh, 100 metres to go that Magado was actually in front and Herzog just pushed back in that uh, last 20 metres. Just seen the Australian rider Oscar Chamberlain cross the line. He was involved in the mix. Here's confirmation of the result. Emil Herzog of Germany takes the title ahead of Antonio Morgado in second. And